In our previous video, we created a simple Android app with App Inventor. And this app simply collects keyboard shortcuts and then displays them with a notification. In this video, we're going to talk about some of the fundamental concepts of programming, sequence, selection, and iteration, and talk about how they can be used with App Inventor. First, what are sequence selection and iteration? These are our fundamental programming concepts, as I mentioned. As I mentioned. Uh, sequence means we're going to perform all steps in a predetermined order. So one, two, three, four, five, we're going to take steps in that order, and we will execute all of them. Selection means we're going to make a decision and then take an action based on that decision. So if one condition is true, we might do one behavior. Uh, otherwise, if it's not true, we'll do a different behavior. Using this, we might not invoke all actions. And then iteration is going to perform the same action over a collection of similar objects or maybe uh, for a certain number of times. So we might prompt the user three times for a password, and on the third time we might lock the user out. That would be an example of iteration. So let's start with sequence. Sequence uh, in App Inventor is going to be a series of steps as we see here, and they're typically each step is going to have this kind of shape where we have a curved end and then we have a little dimple on the top and then a little notch on the bottom. And what this means is that we can tie these together. The notch will hook to a dimple of the next step that we want to execute. So we see here uh, we have a basically an event handler. And the event handler is going to do one, two, three, four steps in that order. Add, a, add an item to a list, call the notifier and show that it's saved, change the background color of the screen, and then reset the text box to be blank. So this is a series of steps that has to happen in this specified order. A good, a good real life example of sequence is what you do when you wake up. Wake up, shower, get dressed, start car, drive car, go to school, go to work, whatever. You have to do these in this order. You can't miss a step. You can't drive your car without starting your car. Uh, you can't shower before you've woken up. So these are steps that we all want to do, and we want to execute them in a specified order. Now, selection. Uh, an example, a real-life example of selection is maybe how you drive to school or drive to work. Uh, I know when I drive, a lot of times I'll take a look at how traffic is, and I might take a different route if there is a delay on my normal route. So if Interstate 75 is delayed more than 25 minutes, then I will take I-71. If I take I-71, that means I'm not taking I-75. On the other hand, if I-75 is not delayed, I'll go ahead and take I-75. So that's a real life example of selection. Now, how do we do this with App Inventor? With App Inventor, we're going to use the Control tab and the Logic tab. So over here, when I say control, this is the control tab, and you'll see we have if then, and then down lower we have if then else, and then the logic tab has some comparisons that we use and some ways that we can chain some uh, comparisons together. So uh, the control tab, if then, if 75 is backed up, then take 71. Uh, or, you know, an even better example would be if it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, then go to work. Otherwise, we just don't go to work. So that's a good example of an if-then. If it is these days, we go to work. Otherwise, we simply don't go to work. If-then-else is a, is a better example of the 7175 uh, that I was talking together. If 75 is backed up, then take 71. Else, take 75. So you see, we have two behaviors that could happen and a decision that determines which one is going to happen. Uh, a lot of times we'll use this kind of comparison operator, which you'll see under the uh, logic tab, which is going to be the condition that we're testing. So you see here it has a, an equal sign, uh, could also be not equals. So it uh, could be something like is 75 equal to delayed, then take 71, for instance. So comparison operator like that. Okay, uh, iteration. So iteration uh, is going to be a repeated action. Uh, an example of iteration is what I do each day. Uh, so is the semester in progress? Uh, are we 
beyond the beginning of the semester but not yet at the end and is it a weekday if these two things are true then I'm going to go to school so in other words every day of the semester is a member of a collection or a member of a list and every day of the semester I'm going to apply these same steps as long as it's a weekday and the semester is in progress then I will go to school so we're we're shaking hands with each day of the semester once okay we go from day one to day two to day three we shake hands with each day exactly one time in App Inventor, this is going to also be under our friend, uh, the Control tab. And we're going to see that we have things like for each number or for each item or while and do. Uh, all of these will do iteration. For each item in list means we're iterating over a list or a collection of something. Could be days of the week. Could be the number of keyboard shortcuts or hints that were given in our introductions but it's some collection we're going to iterate over. On the other hand, while, well, it does a very similar thing to for each. Uh, a lot of times with a while loop, we don't know in advance how many times we're going to execute it. Uh, if I may step back to the for each, if we have a collection of maybe 100 days, we know that loop is going to iterate 100 times, one for each day. So for each tends to be used with things where we have a finite list or we know how many times we're going to iterate. A while loop, we could do it with a list as well, but while loops traditionally tend to be things where we don't know how many times we're going to iterate. For example, did you enter a valid password? Uh, you might have entered it right off the bat. Or maybe it took you three tries, or maybe it took you five tries. We're not going to know until you actually take this action. So the test is going to be, is the password that you entered valid? Is it your password? If it is, thank you, we're all done. If not, we're going to continue to prompt and say, hey, uh, can you send your password again? Can you enter your password? That one is incorrect. So that's where we're going to use a for each versus a, a while. Okay. Um, with App Inventor, uh, this is an example of a for each loop that is iterating over a known uh, collection. The collection is a global variable called shortcuts. And again, that's something I created in a, in, a, in a different video when we were creating our first app. But the shortcuts is a list of keyboard shortcuts that everyone gave me on their uh, introductory survey. So uh, say I think we have uh, probably 15 people enrolled, 15 shortcuts. For each item in the list shortcuts, for each shortcut in the list shortcuts, uh, get our notifier, show an alert, and show the shortcut. So we're going to show every shortcut exactly one time. Not zero, not more than one, exactly one time. So that's an example of sequence selection and iterator with App Inventor. In the next videos, we're going to update the application that we've written, and we're going to implement each of these, probably each in a separate video, uh, so that we can take a look how it looks in real life. Thank you.